Entering the world of Grounded can be intimidating, but hopefully this video will give you the guidance you need to survive with confidence. When you arrive, you'll see how large your surroundings are, but don't be afraid. One day, you'll conquer this world. So let's get into it. Collect anything and everything. You'll need these to start crafting the essentials such as an axe, a spear, a hammer, and a torch. Build your lean-to and a spit first. Making more than one spit won't hurt and it pays off in the long run. This will help with healing until you can start crafting smoothies. Building your base. Depending if you plan on staying where you're at for a while or plan on moving to another location, it's best to get an idea of how big your starter base will be. I personally build a medium-sized base for storage purposes until I can get something like this. Beginner base locations. If you plan on moving, these are a few locations that I've built and have had no problem whatsoever. The oak tree. Initially, you'll start out in the beginning, leading you to the first field station. Here, I mostly build my first starter home here. But if you plan on moving, you can look at the oak tree. Now I know there are wolf spiders, but if you go to sleep at 6 p.m., you won't have to worry about them, which then wakes you up at 6 a.m. and they're already sleeping. So the picnic table is pretty great for building, but it's got some downsides. It's bad for food unless you like mushrooms. If you build under the picnic table, you'll be perfectly safe from the bees because at the picnic table, they will aggro to you if you're near like the top of the picnic table or around the picnic table. If you do plan on building on top of the picnic table, I suggest building towards the back end of it, which is where bees don't normally fly around. And I've never had any problems with them at least. Another downside to building at the picnic table is you'll be far away from resources. However, if you spend a decent amount of time in the beginning, such as your starter house, you'll be okay. Just make sure to collect those resources before you move. Now let's talk about the workbenches. One should be fine for single player, but I would recommend making more than one if you're playing multiplayer, as only one person can access them at a time. Organization. Get organized early in the game. I promise it pays off in the long run. Being able to stay organized helps because of the fact that when you're collecting all sorts of resources, you can get lost in what you have and what you need. Beginning armor. Now, let's be real. The clover armor sucks. Now I know it can be tempting to see your first armor, but I promise you, it'd be better to wait especially if you want to thrive in the beginning. The acorn armor is the best possible heavy armor that will provide you the best protection until you can get the ladybug armor, which is tier 2. I recommend you getting the acorn armor before you take on ladybugs. They are a beast. So let's talk about the ant armor. While the ant armor is useful for exploring the ant hill and being safe from the soldier ants, it's not a great way to protect yourself. But it is good to use for building, so grab it when you can. I would also recommend you do it when you get your acorn armor. This just makes it easier to stand up against the soldier ants and the surrounding ants that wants to take part of your battle. Grinders and spinning wheels. Build these early on and make sure to make multiple. I go for at least two grinders for single player and I would say at least four for multiplayer. Now spinning wheels are important early in the game as you don't want to waste resources making one crude rope. Now the hedge lab. This will be your first lab that you'll do. You'll definitely want at least the acorn armor to do this. Now at the hedge lab you'll find your first burgle super chip. Take it to Burgle and you'll unlock some important stuff like the zipline. I know, I know, there's a lot of running around and that zipline is oh so tempting. But unless you plan taking on a bunch of orb weavers, I suggest you get used to it. Aphid slippers. Now in the beginning of the game, you are so slow, it's painstaking. So crafting aphid slippers allows you to move a little bit more freely and a little bit faster, which makes it easier for you to travel. Just remember before you get into a battle, make sure you switch it out for your other armor, otherwise you'll end up repairing your slippers a lot more as they are not as durable against attacks. Learn to parry. It is so crucial in the beginning of the game 
there's only so much that your armor can do. If you're having a hard time learning to parry, I suggest practicing in custom mode if you need to. There, you can turn off the damage, leaving you in god mode so you can practice. Don't be afraid. I've done it. People have done it. You're not alone. Mutations, mutations, mutations. They are a great way to buff you up so it makes surviving easier. Make sure to use them. In the beginning of the game, you'll be able to use at least two mutations, so don't forget to activate them. Set your spawn point. Build lean-tos everywhere you go. Setting your spawn point makes it easier for you in case you end up dying or you end up like me on the other side of the map, which requires more running. Wolf spiders. Yes, you will need to defeat these creatures. But rest assured, the first wolf spider is always the hardest. They will have the most health you'll see in the beginning of the game. You will need to learn how to parry when going against them, unless you die of poison. After you successfully kill one, you'll unlock Mithridatism, which boosts your immunity to poison, making it easier to face these creatures. And lastly, to end it all, don't be afraid to change the difficulty. It's there for a reason and at your convenience. I have done this, especially when playing by yourself. There's just some things in this game that even I find challenging, and I've been playing this game for a while. So don't be afraid to change the difficulty. So there you go, guys. If I missed anything or you're still having problems starting out, leave a comment. If you'd like to see a guide for mid-game and late-game, subscribe for more videos like this. And if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave a like. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.